Techniques used for applying shading to an object are quite varied. Each technique produces a different texture and feel to the drawing. The drawing medium used may determine the shading technique that is applied in the drawing. It is normal for the shading technique to change according to the drawn material. It is just as normal to do everything with the same technique. There are few rules that will bore you in drawing. There are two rules, namely the drawing surface, generally speaking, everything can be a canvas, the material we will draw on, and being open to broadening your horizons. Since we have touched on the basic subject, you will see examples with a pen for now. I don't want to limit your horizons by dictating shading techniques. I will present different techniques in shading. We'll start with the lines we made in the first lesson, the linear technique. Your basic knowledge and compound is the line. It is a connection between two points. The line is what will be included in our first lesson and our last lesson. Don't get too confused. This topic will be covered in every lesson. Let's focus on our shading technique. It's easy to get caught up in the technique in which the material is applied and lose sight of the reason why we apply shading in the first place. Light is how we see, after all, and shading informs us of the light within a scene. We understand the light within the scene through the use of value and contrast. Value and contrast. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color. Light values are called tints, and dark values are called shades. Contrast deals with differences. Contrast is produced when any difference between elements such as texture, color, size, or value occurs. It can be subtle or extreme. When it comes to shading, we are mostly concerned with the contrast that is produced from changes in value. When light hits the subject, it produces a range of contrasting values. The intensity of the light determines the contrast of values. Generally, the stronger the light, the higher the contrast. Our lines may not be regular, they may have been crooked. You may not have achieved the desired effect. Don't think about it, we're just getting started. As in the first lessons, this involves hand and eye coordination. Continue until you feel the drawing is finished, without making the entire area the same tone. As a result of zoning exercises, you can apply the technique you want. The important thing is to know the basics. Which one you use is up to you. The area you need to concentrate on here is to blend the light properly. We are talking about the object, and we want to highlight the different light areas of the object properly. Do not forget that it is an option not to shade. We need to know that. In the first lesson, we trained our hands, and now we have added the situation to the exercise. We decide where the lines will be. There are two object drawings in this lesson. The same shading technique is used, but a different effect is reflected. As you can see, it has to do with the way you use the line. The most important thing we need to know and apply is how we draw the line and the pressure we put on the pen. The pressure we put on the pen will give us light and shadow. The way we draw the line will also show what kind of object we are drawing. Do not forget to take a break after each lesson, you may not feel it, but you need to rest your hands and eyes. See you in the next lesson.